Hello, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. It's not long to go now until the Zen 3 announcement from AMD, which will be on October the 8th. And in the past couple of weeks, I've been talking about Zen 3 and the information that was already out there. And some of that info included possible IPC gain of about 15 to 20% on single threaded performance. And also there was a possibility of a price increase on Zen 3 as well. Now we haven't actually had any benchmarks on the CPU as yet, which is exactly what I've got today. And to be honest, when I saw the results, I was pretty stunned. So let's not waste any more time and uh, let's take a look now. So this is a tweet from CapFrameX, who's actually summarized the results from Tom Apisak. Tom Apisak is the source of the leak, and he actually found these results in the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark website for two CPUs, one which is a Ryzen 7 5800X, and the other is the i9-10900K. Now CapFrameX has summarized all of this and said that Ryzen 5800X or Zen 3 will be 15% faster than Comet Lake and around about 27% faster than Zen 2. Now if you recall a couple of videos ago, I said that Zen 3's IPC game would probably be around 15 to 20% faster than Zen 2 from the rumors that were out there and it's looking from these results that it could be faster than that. So let's take a look at this table which summarizes the results for Ashes of Singularity at crazy 4K settings. Now you'll note that here it says CPU frame rate and not normal frame rate and we'll differentiate the two in just a second. But for normal workloads, the 10900K scores 136.3, for 3800X it was 125.6 and 5800X it's 166.6. So a huge 30 FPS difference there. Um, you can take a look at the medium and heavy results for yourself. There are similar gains for Zen 3. Planet 3D now has summarized this in terms of percentages, so if you prefer looking at it that way, uh, this is the table for you. So the difference between a 5800X and a 3800X is that at normal workload it will be 132% faster and for a 10900K a 5800X is 122% faster. And as you can see there, uh, it decreases a little bit between the medium and heavy workloads. So let's take a look at Tom Abisak's screenshot for the benchmark results and under hardware configuration you can see the CPU is clearly listed there as the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X and it's an 8 core processor and under game configuration the benchmark was done on the 29th of September 2020. On the right hand side you've got the summary and there's a blue bar there for a frame rate and a green bar for a CPU frame rate. Now I believe for the frame rate, the blue bar, that's the actual frame rate on screen and then the green bar would be the CPU frame rate which is the CPU rendering each frame. So if you look under averages, the CPU frame rate of 133.6, it's much faster than the actual frame rate. So it's rendering the re frame faster than what you actually see on the screen. So it's not bottlenecking the system. But I wanted to show you these two screens for the 5800X and the 10900K because I was curious about something here and that is that the 10900K still has a faster average frame rate, the blue bar. So if you take a look at, say for example, under normal batch for the 10900K, the average frame rate is 81.3 but for the 5800X the, for normal batch, the average frame rate is 77.6 so it's a little bit less around about five percent and I'm not really sure what to make of that the only thing I can think of is that the 10900k result was done on the 20th of May so it was done at a different time now the two results are from the same user I would probably say that it is the same system but something has changed since then I'm not sure what um, but the average frame rate is about 5% less and I'm not really sure why but I did want to point that out that it has a faster CPU frame rate which is what we're comparing anyway NerdTech summarizes this really well and he says CPU score on Zen 3 8 cores is a lot higher than Zen 2 8 cores more than expected low latency unified cache plus IPC plus clocks. Jim from Adore TV, he runs a YouTube channel, he responded to this by saying it's around 22% ahead of the best Zen 2 result I can find. And then Jude Joanna said in what use case would these results apply the most? Jim writes 
It'll be integer. My info for a month suggested 20% integer uplift and around about 10% floating point uplift is likely for Zen 3. Game logic is something like 80% integer and 20% floating point last I heard, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a bit more floating point than that now. WCC FTech has an article that summarizes all of this information about the benchmark results and I'll leave a link in the description below. But I think they summarized it really well by saying, the fundamental changes to Zen 3 would come in the form of a new architecture for higher IPC gains, a redesigned CCD and cache structure, higher clocks and improved efficiency. A lot of the information and rumors alluded to the fact that there's going to be a unified cache design for Zen 3. And just to explain that a little bit, if you look at the block diagram here for the 3950X, each CPU had its own 16 megabyte L3 cache, but what they're gonna do now for Zen 3 is combine that into a 32 megabyte pool of cache. And I think that's gonna help a lot in terms of performance if you're able to use a much larger pool of cache. I think this is going to help out a lot in gaming, especially when there are a lot of games out there that don't use up all of the cores and threads for the CPU, or it uses up an uneven number of cores and threads. So for example, it might use six cores or 10 cores, and now you have a bigger pool of cache to draw your information from. And I think that's going to help out performance a lot. Now the 5800X isn't the only CPU that AMD is looking to launch. It's looking like that there's going to be a second CPU, which is the 5900X, and that's the 12 core and 24 thread variants. And WCC FTech has an article up about this as well, and it's saying that the 5900X will allegedly be up to 5 GHz and it will have up to 150 watts TDP. In this article it says, the source reports that AMD's Ryzen 9 5900X is going to be the fastest chip offering for some time, and it will feature a maximum of 12 cores and 24 threads. We know this from previous rumors too that AMD is preparing at least two Zen 3 Vermeer SKUs for the AM4 platform, which would include the Ryzen 9 5900X 12 core and Ryzen 7 5800X 8 core processor. It also goes on to write, one of the main areas of improvement where AMD has put lots of effort into tuning on Zen 3 is the clock frequencies. As such, the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X is said to reach boost clocks of up to 5 GHz. That's a plus 300 MHz improvement over the Ryzen 9 3900 XT and a 400 MHz improvement over the Ryzen 9 3900 X in terms of boost clocks. So final thoughts. I think everybody thought that Zen 3 was going to be about 15-20% to 20 faster than the previous generation. And if that was the case, that would be roughly equivalent to the i9-10900K. But it's looking like that it's going to be about 20-30% to 30 faster, meaning that it's going to be the clear leader in terms of single core and multi-core performance. Not only will AMD have products that will have more cores and threads than the Intel CPUs, like the 5950X and the 5900X, they will for the first time have more single core performance. And I think that's gonna be very compelling for the Zen 3 lineup. All right, make sure to click on the like button if you like this video and subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.